In patients with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS for short, neurons can be injured by a neurotransmitter called glutamate. Let's see how this happens and what Riluzole can do to stop it. This is glutamate. It is the excitatory neurotransmitter of the nervous system. That means it is used to transmit the electrical signal throughout the nervous system. This is the NMDA receptor. This is the kinate receptor. When glutamate binds to these receptors, they open and allow calcium and sodium to enter. This is calcium. This is sodium. These positively charged ions transmit the electrical signal throughout the nervous system. When glutamate is used excessively by the body, it is theorized that it can be destructive to the neuron, which could cause ALS. With excessive glutamate destroying the neurons, the electrical signal reduces transmission throughout the body. This decreases and eventually stops the control of voluntary muscle movement. When riluzole really binds to the kinate and NMDA receptor, it keeps the receptor from opening and allowing calcium and sodium to enter. With these positively charged ions unable to enter through the receptor, the overexcitability of the neuron is stopped. It is also theorized that riluzole really can decrease the release of glutamate. This is sodium. This is the sodium channel. In the presynaptic nerve, sodium is used to assist in the release of glutamate from the vesicle. Riluzole binds to the sodium channel and stops sodium from entering. With less sodium available, glutamate is not released from the vesicle. This reduces the amount of glutamate available at the synapse. With NMDA and kinate receptors blocked and less available glutamate at the synapse, the destruction of the nerves is reduced and electrical transmission is preserved.